Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Welcome to Beachwalk Blog. Today we're going to be talking about running shoes. Now, this is something I see all the time on the socials. Hey everybody, could you recommend to me what shoes I should buy? Or what's the best running shoe for me? And every time I comment the one that is the most comfortable for you. Now there's research on this and I'm going to refer to this for my uh, comments on this which are the most comfortable shoe is the one that you should wear. Now there obviously when you go into a running shop there are hundreds of different running shoes at, cr across different shops of course maybe one shop won't won't carry hundreds of different ones they'll be kind of more loyal to certain brands um, but what you want to really think about is what the research says about running shoes preventing injuries and really the research shows that running shoes don't prevent injuries um, there is there's really nothing that that shows that running shoes do anything to prevent injuries because we know that the foot really is at the mercy of everything above so how everything else above moves and loads affects the foot. Now we know that pronation is not a bad thing and, and this is still something I see uh, a lot of which is you know I'm an over pronator, I'm a supinator, um, yeah I mean you know I'm an over pronator, yeah maybe, maybe you are, maybe, uh, maybe you're not. Uh, maybe the person who told you you're an overpronator doesn't have the slightest clue what they're talking about. Maybe they do. Probably not. Um, pronation is not a bad thing. Pronation is actually something that we want to have um, because it's how we react and absorb the landing forces when we run. Pronation is a combination of movements through the ankle and the foot. So the tibia has to travel forwards, which is dorsiflexion. The foot has to evert, which is where the sole of the foot essentially turns outwards from being inwards when you land. So when you land, you're in more of a supinated position relative to neutral. And then as you roll over the foot, it, the foot rolls outwards essentially. Or, sorry the sole of the foot rolls outwards so it rolls let's show you it goes like this right not quite that much but roughly something something remotely looking like that obviously the left foot goes that way right so it obviously right foot and left foot do different things they do the same thing but um, in the opposite direction so pronation is not a bad thing we want pronation to occur because it's how we absorb and uh, also lengthen the time uh, that the impact is dealt with. So if we are not pronating very well, then what we're doing essentially is we're trying to absorb force through a stiff foot. So a foot that is supinated is stiff. Okay. A foot that is pronating is mobile and absorbing force, absorbing shock. And we want that. We want to absorb shock and force. We don't want to be in a stiff foot, stiff ankle position when we should be in a mobile foot and ankle position. Now, shoes that are designed with a anti-pronation uh, insert or or build in the shoe is not something that I really recommend um, just simply because you're not fixing anything you're not changing anything you're not changing why it occurs you're just trying to block that movement at the foot at the ankle and I don't like that I think that's a very bad way of attempting to mitigate whatever risk there is which is 
not been proven by any research. Pronation has not been proven to be injurious or damaging. Pronation is the pre of supination. So it's the pre to supination. It's the thing that happens before you supinate. So you must pronate. So trying to take away pronation is a bad thing because that force has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. The force is there, it has to go somewhere. If you think you're negating it, you're not. What you're doing is you're just sending it somewhere else. And that's that's probably really the worst thing that you can do. Um, you know, if, if, if that force that, that you're encountering is not dealt with in the right place at the right time, it's being dealt with in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's not good, right? So shoes that are um, saying to you that they're going to give you an anti-pronation is firstly is really not good secondly it doesn't really make much difference uh, according to the research and thirdly shoes do not stop you from getting injured all right now what does stop you from getting injured is having good movement and good timing in your gait cycle and that's something of course that you know we work on a lot in the sling method so, shoes. What shoe is the right shoe for you? Well, I'm going to go back to what I said before. I would not be doing anything other than choosing the shoe that feels the most comfortable. That's what I would do. I would choose the shoe that feels the most comfortable. Now, for me, I uh, I run in Nike Free. Uh, sorry, Nike Flex RNs. I think they're Nike Flex RNs, they're a pair of, pair of Nikes. Nikes make neutral shoe, neutral running shoes. They don't make uh, support shoes or, you know, anti-pronation shoes. They make neutral running shoes and they're really comfortable. So every time I put them on, it really just feels like I'm putting on a slipper. Um, it's, a, it's a nice snug fit. It doesn't feel stiff anywhere. I've never ever got blisters of any kind wearing them, although I do wear toe socks as well. That's another story. Um, but yeah, the shoe that is right for you is the one that feels the most comfortable for you when you put it on and when you walk in it and when you run in it. All right, if it doesn't feel comfortable, the likelihood of you changing your gait movement in an attempt to avoid the discomfort is really high. All right, you, you'll kind of, uh, you'll move around a bit, I uh, don't like that, uh, it doesn't feel good. Every time I land, I want to feel good about my landing. I don't want to try and avoid something in my shoe that's going to feel, you know, not very nice to land on, or not very nice to, to roll through, right? If I'm desperately trying to avoid the hill cup, that's not going to work very well, right? So the Nikes that I have, they don't even have a heel cup. There's no heel cup, it's just fabric. It's just a nylon netting. It's so comfortable. And I've now got, what, 1,100, probably approaching 1,100 miles out of my pair of Nike Flex RNs. So that leads me on to the next point, which is how many miles should I change my running shoes at? Now, um, if we go back to the research from 1985, which showed that the biggest degradation in shoe shock absorbency, um, so that's the, the biggest depreciation in the shoe essentially, happens in the first 100 miles. And Bearing in mind, this was 1985. Shoes have come on a long way since 1985. Now the question is, have those shoes got better at absorbing force? Probably yes. Does that mean that they last less long or longer? Right, because if they're better at doing their job, of absorbing force that doesn't mean that they're going to be longer lasting it's like a tire on a car it's a so it might be a softer compound in which case 
it gives you more grip in which case it will wear quicker okay so we haven't quite got to that yet and i haven't found any research on that that shows the wear rate and we keep going back to this research from 1985 and that's the most recent research on the subject which is kind of sad um, now my feelings on this are one of I, I don't change my shoes at 350 miles or 500 miles um, I, I really I don't see the need for me personally um, that's me of course I know what everybody who's listening to this is saying. Oh yeah, but everybody's different. Yeah, you are. Everybody's different in in a little way. Um, but everybody, not everybody has a different gait. Not everybody has a different landing. Uh, you know, if you're landing on the back of a traveling leg, then you're probably gonna get better wear in your shoes than if you're landing on a forward traveling leg. Okay, because the impact force is going to be higher landing on a forward traveling leg than it is on a backward tra traveling leg. Um, also, what type of sole your shoe has. If it has like a stick on, a stick on grip versus a single, uh, single molded sole. There's different types of soles. Now I look on, uh, I look at something like a Hoka uh, I might be throwing Hoka under the bus here. I'm not trying to, of course. I'm not. I'm not loyal to any brand of shoe. I, I just run in what's comfortable for me. So that's another point. Don't be loyal to a pair of shoes because these shoe manufacturers, they will change a shoe on you, and you'll go from, like I did, a Mizuno Wave Rider 13 to the Mizuno Wave Rider 14, and it destroyed my feet. Okay, so don't be loyal to a pair of shoes. Always go with the comfort. All right, um, I'm gonna go back to what I was just saying, the sole. Um, and I, I'm not meaning to throw Hoka under the bus here, it's just something that I saw yesterday. Uh, I put my shoes in the dryer. Don't do that. I put my shoes in the dryer and the sole came off. And when they say the sole came off, what they mean is the tread came off. And that's like, you know, quarter of an inch thick or eighth of an inch thick tread that's just essentially stuck on to the uh, foam of the shoe and with the heat in the dryer it just melted the glue and it came off so I would say just glue it back on and you know whatever get some get some nice glue and glue it back on but you know um, some people say I oh, know they're trashed at that point that's okay get a new pair of shoes go with the comfort factor um, yeah, so um, what the sole is made of and how it's made is going to have an impact on how, how long it wears, but more so how you run, what your landing is like. Uh, the terrain you that you run on is also going to play a factor as well, it's going to play a part in it. Um, so there's different factors there. Um, obviously we know about landing forces, land on a backward traveling leg, you will be landing uh, in, a, in a way that is more conducive to longer shoe life, longer tread life on a shoe. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a few factors there. Obviously weight of the person is going to be a factor as well speed that you run it if you do a lot of speed work in a shoe um, and then you maybe you rotate with a different shoe to do your longer runs I don't know um, but <clears throat> speed accelerations is also going to be a factor as well if you're accelerating whereas if you're just doing the same or very close to the same steady speed there's going to be a different wear rate on the shoe more than likely <coughs> you'll find the same thing with cars when you accelerate hard you'll wear the tires quicker when you do hard cornering, you'll wear the tires quicker. So these are all factors, okay? Um, but as far as the actual research shows, there's really no need to rotate shoes, unless of course you want to. There's been nothing that shows 
um, really that, that runners are any less susceptible to injury um, through rotating shoes. So really, not really much need for that unless of course you want to. That's okay, if you want to, go for it. Um, so yeah, don't feel like, uh, you know, you have to buy two pairs of shoes. Um, last thing, uh, cost of shoe. No, uh, I, I found a piece of research that tested uh, a low cost shoe versus a high cost shoe. And really the effect was, well, one, one was the weight of the shoe affected the economy, the running economy. Um, and the lower cost shoe uh, affected, negatively affected the running economy um, slightly. It wasn't a lot, it was, it was so minimal, it was, it's not even worth it. Um, and the cost of the shoe I think was something like 45 euros. So super low cost shoe, but it did a great job, it lasted long. Um, and uh, didn't really impact the running economy very much at all. And it also outlasted the more expensive shoe by like two and a half times. So yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting one. The higher the price you pay does not mean that it's gonna give you a better uh, wear factor or an improved less wear rate to put it a different way so yeah there's a few things to think about there um, if really what you want to think about when you're buying shoes is uh, buy what you can afford right because there, there's really not that much difference um, and unless we're talking about the carbon sold shoes in which case there's a whole nother talk that we need to do on that because there's research coming out on those that yeah um, might not be quite so good um, and that's to do with ground contact times uh, when you decrease ground contact time you increase force over time so because t uh, force is uh, time variable uh, less time on the ground equals well I have to deal with higher force because that's when obviously if you're spending less time on the ground you might not be absorbing the force that's uh, that you're that you're encountering as well so these are all things you've got to think about um, but i would be looking at the comfort factor as the best i would also be looking at your personal gait biomechanics as the biggest factor in wear rates. That's what I would be looking at, okay? Um, so think about that in terms of, well, I can't change my, my running biomechanics, can I? Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. Now, if you are spending $200 on a pair of shoes, running shoes, and only getting 500 miles out of them, I say only, that's what a lot of people get, apparently. Um, and I'm getting 1,100 or more, because I'm at about 1,100 on my current pair, and I have no intention of throwing them in the bin, because they're still good. And people say, oh, but you're gonna get injured. And I go, well, what about all those people who run barefoot, who don't get injured? When do they change their shoes? Oh, wait, they're not wearing any. Okay, so, it's all a question of how your body adapts. Now, if you work on your biomechanics and you work on improving your biomechanics, you'll get better wear on your shoes. But improving your biomechanics doesn't mean getting stronger at squats or doing planks because that does not improve your biomechanics for running. In fact, it negatively affects your biomechanics for running. It actually probably makes them worse. It probably it does, it makes it worse. Because of all the things I've talked about in the past. We don't need to go into that for this one because we're talking about shoes. Now, if working on your biomechanics can improve your shoe wear, let's say by 50%, let's say, actually, let's say by 20%. 
let's say it improves your biomechanics uh, sorry improving your biomechanics in, increases your tr your wear on your shoes increases the resistance to wear should i say by 10 percent now over the course of 10 pairs of shoes that's going to compound right because you're going to get a continued improvement so over the course of it of a year you're gonna essentially you're gonna save yourself a lot of money because you might have i don't know you might have three pairs of shoes in a year three pairs of running shoes in one year currently but then when you improve your biomechanics you might only need one or two so the cost savings can be huge all right so these these are all things to think about and you know people say oh it's too expensive the the court your nine week course is too expensive and then they go and drop 350 or 250 on a pair of running shoes and i'm like oh okay sure yeah they're not going to last you very long so you know the when you when you buy this course you're actually investing in yourself it's an investment in yourself and if you know i'm not going to bleat on about it too much but if you don't see that then that, that you know that that's really you know that's another story it's an investment in yourself just think about that all right i'm gonna end this one right here and uh, i'll see you in the next one Talk to you soon. Have a good one.